Now we bring in the great Marcus Thompson. We use him as often as we can. He's a busy guy. We'll get to the Warriors in a couple of minutes. I got to tell you, the end of the Suns game was fascinating to me. First of all, Kevin Durant, and I hadn't lost a regular season game since November. He's now lost seven straight playoff games. He disappeared for the last four minutes, which I don't know if I put it on KD. Uh, Maybe I should. Monty Williams, Chris Paul, Devin Booker. Can we get him the ball? That was shocking. So let's start with that. Who, Who do I put the blame on for Kevin Durant not getting more looks in the last four minutes? You know who you put the blame on? I got the answer for you. His name is Russell Westbrook. That's who you put the blame on. That's the one who came in and said, you know what? I'm going to take over this game. All the shade Russell Westbrook has endured all these years. I mean, that might that was the greatest three for 19 playoff performance of all time. I mean, think about it. He went three for 19 and he completely dominated the game. He had he he played great on Kevin Durant, turned him into a passer, like facilitator. He had Russell Westbrook, like I mean, he had uh Devin Booker bothered, and that play at the end with the block and then throwing it off Booker and like showing the world his heart. I mean. Russell Westbrook is the blame for all of it. They had no answer for Russ. Can you believe it? it? Well, and Devin Booker's interesting because you trail by three with 17 seconds left. A layup does you no good. Shoot the three. Yes. Uh, that was and, weird. The, and, and the second thing, you know, situationally, that was bizarre. And Booker complains a lot to the refs. So it's like, dude, if you get your shot blocked, don't complain to the ref. Finish the play. Like that, that is a moment that a star can't allow to happen like you 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 can't be in dialogue with an official as a play late in the game is going on like that's on book and i like him but that that was situationally really bad basketball to me that was my takeaway and russ deserves great credit that was a yeah. un- tremendous play but that's bad situational basketball by phoenix isn't it oh yeah no question i mean they they made some questionable decisions down the stretch and that's i mean that's bookers and mo right i mean that's that's what the modern player does. They they stop playing to complain, right? They stop playing to argue with the refs. We see Luca do it. We see all of them do it. But there's something about playoff basketball. You just got to play through that. You, you have to play through that. And bottom line is, like you said, this is solved by getting Kevin Durant the ball. <laughs> like that's 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 the answer. And so if you're going to say, all right, I got this. I'm going to take over. I got Westbrook run on one. I'm taking him. And it don't work out, then you need to get back and play some D. And he played great D. That's the crazy part. Booker played great D. He, he was he was incredible in defense. But at the end of games, when it didn't go his way, it just wasn't. It, it was a great play by Westbrook, not a great play by Devin Booker. And I feel like Russell Westbrook deserves that. Let's pivot now to the Warriors because we're going to get 12 to 15 minutes with you on the Warriors. Uh, I came out last week and I thought Sacramento would win the opener. I'll take the Warriors in six. Uh, my question was, how much do you get out of Andrew Wiggins? Were you surprised how effective Andrew Wiggins was having not played for two, three months? I, I was. I mean, he's such a freak athlete that, like, how do you do that? <laughs> like, he's bouncing around. He had three blocks. He's playing defense. He's rebounding. He's getting to his spots, and it looks like normal. It, it is wopsy, even if you know, like, this dude is a unique athlete. Like, really, he is special in a very, right. like, created in a lab kind of way, right? He could run yeah. all day. Before this year, he never missed games. Like, he's just a guy who could just play all day. And he looked like that. Uh, it did catch up with him, right? He was winded. I think it was one yeah. for eight from three. He missed the three that would have won the game, basically, wide open from the corner. So you could see, like, the effects of it. But, man, let me, let me tell you, Colin, after the game – in a loss, you could feel that they're like, oh, we got Wiggins back. Oh, oh, okay. Really? Like, even after a loss, they were like, oh, we got we got Wiggins back. And that was kind of the sentiment, like, we're ju- we're fine. Our whole squad is here, and Wiggins looks like that already? Okay, we're pretty good. Uh, that's one of the, the Warriors that never get down. They very rarely get down. That's still one of the higher moments I felt in that locker room after a loss, where they felt like, brooding confidence well now with Kaminga and Wiggins uh Peyton will get to him in a second and Dante DiVincenzo they they do have a seven to an eight man rotation here of you know veteran players Uh, you know a player 
the Warriors um, don't have to mention Jordan Poole by name, but it's pretty obvious Kerr and Draymond take turns, <laughs> you know, firing shots at him. Defensively, Marcus, he's it's a problem. Like, he's not engaged. I thought he had three or four lapses defensively, and I honestly thought it cost them the game. Um, are his minutes – I mean, last year in the playoffs, Marcus, the longer they went – the fewer minutes he played like there was there. Do you think there's real concern about what he gives up on the defensive end? He's just not engaged a lot. I don't know if it matters if he's engaged or not. He's just not very good at it. So it doesn't matter at this level, right? Like you can be as into it as you want. He made a few good plays, but in the end, he's not guarding De'Aaron Fox. So what he's not guarding Malik Monk. So the thing that, that is important for him, is to be able to go back at you. Like you need they need somebody to go back at they don't have a guy outside of Steph Curry who can catch the ball at the three point line and end up at the rim. He's the only other guy who can do it. He's the only other guy who can dribble well enough and create. So they need him for that, but he also gives up stuff on defense. And that's kind of the catch twenty two with Jordan Poole. If he's rolling and his shot is falling, all right, you you roll with him. Like there was a stretch where they couldn't score and it was him and Malik Monk going at each other. And it was like, what, what, what the heck is this? Is this Michigan versus Kentucky? Like, I but know crunch time, you, you just get the sense in this series against the most efficient offense, the team that could explode like this. He probably won't be playing down the stretch, not that much. He didn't play that much this game. Like, he just wasn't he, there. And Steve Kerr is going to lead defense. He's going to lean defense every time. They scored 123 points. They should win that game. They gave up 126. That was the problem. What are they going to get now from Peyton, who left the game, some sort of core injury? What's the latest on him? He seems to be fine. He said he felt good. Uh, he came back in. Uh, he he just, you know, Peyton is one of them dudes who's he's like a a football player in a sense, like he's a running back. Like he's he's all his whole body's on the line. He's running. He's jumping. He's falling. He's playing bigs. Right. And you just feel like, man, he's got a few years of this, so you need to get him. Because right. there's always something with him, right? He's just he's so physical with the way he plays. And he he's a he's a revelator. He changes everything for them. He gives them something. I feel like he might get a lot of pool minutes if it's not Wiggins. That's what I I honestly when I watch them, yeah. I th I honestly think that Peyton's a better fit. I think when I when I watch Pool on the floor with the Warriors, I can I feel like Draymond's body language isn't great. Sometimes Kerr uh, isn't. Um, um, I feel like they hold their breath a little with Jordan Poole. They don't trust him. They know he's gifted, but they don't trust him. I think they trust Peyton, though he's limited. Yeah, the, the problem with, with Jordan is he's just very young. And the mistakes and the stuff he's got to learn, there's literally no other way around it. Like, he, he gets the ball at the end of the quarter in the game. And Steph is on the court and it's Jordan Poole. And he goes one-on-one -on -one with Fox and, and he turns it over. And it's like, yep, you got to get the ball to Steph in that situation, right? But but in the same vein, he's taken that play and he's gotten a bucket out of it. He just does so many things that nobody else on the team can do. So they got to live with it. And you know what? Here's the reality. They created that monster, right? They taught him how to play. So if he's taking bad shots... He watched him take bad shots. He learned from them, right? He, His swagger, his confidence, they greeted it. So this is just part of it. Like, he, it reminds me of, like, you know, you're messing with a teenager, right? Like, this, you're raising a teenager. Like, there's just parts of raising a teenager that are tough. You got a young dude with that much talent, that much confidence, that much arrogance, that much belief in himself, and also that many flaws. You just got to live with it because they can't win without him. But also... It's it's tough, it, you know. He makes it. He he does some things on the court that frustrate you. And they're all 30, 30 plus years old. They've got four championships. They're veterans, right? You know, they make mistakes too. So they just have to live with it. I feel like they just have to live with it, no matter what. Because bottom line, if if Gary Payton's out there, that's one less score. And if if Clay's not making his shots like he wasn't, especially down the stretch, now it's just all on Steph. They run a box and one on Steph. Who creates offense at that point? Now it's like, yo, you kind of need Jordan Poole in the game. So figure out what to do on defense, but that dude could go get a bucket.
The NBA playoffs are upon us. 20 teams get in, all trying to get that one crown. For last minute amazing deals to watch your favorite NBA team, it can be the Warriors, it could be the Kings, it could be the Sixers, it could be the Bucks. To get great last minute deals on amazing tickets, check out Game Time, the fastest growing ticketing app in the United States. It's called Game Time. Doesn't stop, by the way, with the NBA. They've got NHL tickets, Major League Baseball tickets. By the way, those Major League Baseball games, they last 30 minutes less. So get there early. They've also got concerts and comedy shows. They've got everything at Game Time. Download the Game Time app, and the redeem code is Colin, C O L I N. $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Download the Game Time app, enter the code Colin, C O L I N, for $20 off. Here we go. NBA playoffs, baseball season just starting here in April, NHL as well. No matter where you live, get out, have some fun this week and this year. Download the Game Time app, last minute ticket deals, lowest prices guaranteed. So Draymond does podcasts right after the games. He did last year. Um, you know, it, it's I, I see people take shots at him. Um, it's not like he divulges game plans. How does it sit, though, with the team? I mean, Draymond gives you insight that literally nobody in basketball gives you. <laughs> He's off the floor for the dynasty. Does it sit uncomfortably with the team? How do they feel about it? I, I don't think so. Number, If there's one thing, the I mean, first off, the only people who could possibly say something are like the OGs, right? <laughs> Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, Andre, right? But, Anybody yeah. else, it probably doesn't matter what they say. Is there any team more brand conscious than the, than the Warriors? Right. Is there any team that spends as much time building like who they are? I mean, Clay's riding boats to games, right? Like he's got his whole shtick. Steph, you know, has his thing. Like even Andre Iguodala is the super smart tech guy, right? Like they look at Draymond as that's Draymond's thing. As long as he's playing well, it's fine. I, I haven't heard anything negative about it right like and right. you know draymond is a guy who will do some things that irritates people the podcast ain't one of them from what i can hear it's just draymond plus i don't know how much of this is like yo this is draymond we've known this right. for 10 years now like why we get mad about the sky being blue like draymond likes to talk he's gonna talk he's pretty smart so he knows what he's doing it's gonna be calculated why like why worry about it i think the fans don't like it more than the, the players don't yeah, I think uh, you nailed it. I think he's very measured and calculated. He knows exactly what he's saying. I love it. I find the access fascinating. The um, you know the but there's warriors... a like a there's a like a other element too to it. I think that people should probably know. Like like he's essentially putting his team on notice, right? Like if he's oh, out yeah. there talking. They they kind of got to go back him up, right? And the and and the only reason you would complain about him doing that is if you are afraid you can't back it up, and that's just not Warriors basketball, right? They're gonna go into an arena and they're gonna talk, and then they're all gonna back up the one who's talking. Like that's just how it is. So I do think there's a little bit of an like an ulterior motive as like, all right, I'm gonna put us on notice, and we're gonna have to live, we're gonna have to rise up to the occasion because nobody else on the team will do that. I, I do feel like this is a little bit of team chemistry situation as well. Well, he mentioned Malik Monks 32, which is, he's right about this. You can give up 40 to a Donovan Mitchell or a Kerr, oh, yeah. or you, you can't give up 32 to Malik Monk. Um, I believe, I felt going into this series that the way to win this series, um, I think they're going to get a little physical. I think they'll get the dynasty whistle. I think they'll get the veteran whistle. Do you think we'll see a different kind of game too in Sacramento? Oh yeah, I definitely. I mean, that's playoffs in general. It's going to change a little bit, but I also think the it's going to work the other way. Like Steph Curry got two free throws and Malik Monk got fourteen, so I think Curry's going to get to the line more. Right? <laughs> like, it's like at some point you got to start saying, "Hey, this dude just driving a lot." 
I, I definitely think their answer is to get more aggressive, get more physical. Uh, yes. I don't think you'll see. I think you'll see very physical defenders on De'Aaron Fox and Malik Monk. It won't be like the guys who are good at staying in front, but don't make you feel them like Dante DiVincenzo or Clay Thompson, like uh, Gary Payton, Draymond Green, Jonathan Kaminga. Like they wear on you, they physical, they foul you, like you know they're there. I think you'll see that type of guy. Yep. I think Trey Lyles, they'll be looking for him. And mostly they feel like they got punked like on the board. So the only way to respond is to kind of punch back. But I do I wouldn't be surprised if somebody gets two quick fouls though, because it was too free flowing. It was fun. It was exciting. Like, you know, you know we're gonna get that 95, 97 game at some point. Yeah, I mean, I, I I thought the one, like, I still think the Warriors are fine. I think Phoenix is fine. People adjust. I think the one game over the weekend that I, I did take a step back is um, the Knicks' ability to dominate the glass in multiple key situations. They were the second best rebounding team in the league. They have to rebound oh, well. Yeah. Cause, no question. And, and, I, and I watched that, and I thought, wow, now that's something that's repeatable. Uh, people are looking at Jalen Brunson. He's been great all year. We know that. That I don't doubt. But yeah. the New York Knicks' ability to kind of push Cleveland around and get rebounds, I'm like, wow. That Are we looking at a different series here? It, was there any, outside of the Warriors, was there any takeaway for you this weekend, Marcus, that was anything you took a step back and went, you know, once Giannis got hurt, it's going to be a different game. Celtics yeah. are going to dispose very quickly. Uh, Philadelphia is going to dispose of Brooklyn very quickly. Anything surprise you at all? Not necessarily surprising. I thought Memphis would be a tougher fight. <laughs> For the, like, the Lakers kind of waxed them. I mean, it second half LeBron. dominated. It was like Rury and and, and uh, Reeves, Reeves, right? Like they they were cooking. The Lakers look like uh oh, but you're reminded of the ceiling they had, right? They've played below it for so long, you forget they have it. But it's like, wait a second, if this thing clicks, it might click, click, right? They could, like, if Memphis doesn't put up a fight here, and the Warriors Kings go six or seven of a brawl, but like this right track race, right now, whoever comes out of it, you got to deal with the size and feel the physicality of the Lakers. Man, you can see this kind of kind of shaping up for them in a way that's a little bit like, wow, we we just would have never thought this two months ago. <laughs> like, we would have never thought this like they would have this ride to the, you know, to the uh, uh, Western Conference Finals. I I was I'm interested in the Miami Milwaukee series. I think this was more of a blue kind of game one like I, I think even without Giannis the Bucks are so used to playing without him that they might figure something out so I'm interested to see what they have left uh, I think this is a phenomenon the team that comes in off the play in usually a little bit rolling and and now you know I remember uh, I think it was Memphis got game one against Utah after they if you win two games to get into the playoffs you nice little rhythm, and you're playing a team yep. that was just sitting, was just resting. I think that's a little bit of thing. So I really want to see what Miami has. Actually, they lost one and one one, but I, I want to see if Miami's legit. If they could really extend the series, that changes the entire East if Milwaukee's out. Entire East, it it it, it blows everything up. Now another team could sneak in, like like the Knicks into the East yeah. Finals. I don't know. Um, I don't <laughs> think they will, but you know, I going back to what you said about the Lakers, I thought they'd beat Minnesota and I thought they'd beat Memphis. But I did feel like the longer it goes, it's more of a disadvantage because if you could get in, in and out of this series with Memphis in five games yeah, and LeBron yeah. gets like four days to rest, then you have a real chance to win game one against whoever you play. Like whoever I think you play. there is a path that the Lakers need to hit to win. The Warriors don't. You know, a lot of the good teams don't. The yeah, Lakers yeah. do. There's a path yeah. to success and it's getting rid of Memphis fast. But but do, doesn't it look feasible? I mean, like even, even like Ja got hurt and this is becoming a thing. Ja gets hurt, right? This is obviously right. a thing where this is now the second playoffs in a row he got hurt uh and remember before they were like better without him. They like played in a way where it was like, yo, they're, they they actually lock in on defense, right? But no Stephen Adams, no Brandon Clark. That that 
that's a problem. Memphis, Memphis might be in trouble, even if Josh somehow plays. You're down 0-1. And they've got Anthony Davis who could at any moment just drop 40 on you, right? Like, like they, they got the guy who can do it. LeBron could just drop 40 on you and you're in trouble. Yeah, I mean, they were trailing by four. That was an offensive foul on jaw. The Lakers were getting the ball and were hot. So, it, And by the way, the Lakers had their best quarter of the season in the third quarter and jaw was on the floor. So on he's floor, not, yeah. he wasn't stopping anybody. I thought the Lakers got so many good looks. I mean, the first half, the whole game, they got him. They just didn't hit him in the first half, but yeah, yeah, yeah. they were getting phenomenal looks. Their ball movement was excellent. That's the part though, that makes you think, eh, how real is this? I mean, is Rory hitting all those, the whole series? He won't. No. <laughs> you know, you, no, you're not sold on the Hachimura bandwagon. You're not hopping on. You're not ready for the 24 uh, average of 24 for the series for Hachimura. You ain't. I'm signing up. Rui Hachimura's average of 24 for this entire <laughs> series. Put me down. I got. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm. But I will say, their third leading score, Russell, Rui, Reeves. They've got a collection of guys who are all. I mean, D'Angelo Russell's capable of dropping twenty six points. He's gonna give points. you a game, right? Yeah, no question. Yeah. No question. He can Dennis be a little. Schroeder. Yep, Dennis Schroeder. Uh, by the way, the play in game, Dennis Schroeder was their third nice. guy. So they don't have a they don't have a nail down three. But I mean, listen, the Celtics got to the finals last year, and Marcus Smart is hot and cold. You don't know exactly yeah. what you're getting offensively from Marcus Smart. So I mean, they're. The, if you have two legitimate scores, I mean, what's impressive you can do about the this, number three by committee, right? You, yeah, you can kind of do it by yeah. committee. So, all right. So you still feel good about the Warriors before we let you go? I still think they won it in six. I mean, I, I this is how I played it out. Like, they, I think they lose the first game. I, I just felt like Sacramento was going to make everything. This was like, it reminded me like Sherman Club, right? This was thirty-five years of wanting and wanting. Like they've been waiting for this moment forever. I felt like they were going to make every shot. And there was a stretch where they did. And now the adjustments happen. Let's see if they can handle it. I feel like Warriors get game two, hold serve at home, and we go back. We either go back to Sacramento tied 2-2, or we go back to Sacramento with them playing for their lives to, to stay alive. That That's how I see it shaking out. I wouldn't be shocked, though, if Sacramento won. Because I don't know, Sabonis was kind of terrible in that game, so maybe he re he rebounds. 